Autistic people of Reddit, what is autism really like? I was diagnosed with Asperger's at the age of 11. I feel like I'm part of a play where everyone has the script except me. You know that time you said something stupid and everyone looked at you like you grew a second head? Imagine feeling like that every time you talk to someone. Social interactions that come to others naturally require a lot of thought and planning in my situation. For lack of a better analogy, I have mental checklists for every social event under the sun. For example, I frequent my local nightclub, so my checklist may read as follows. Nice security guard light banter. Don't get startled by the joke nudgy. Jerk security guard ID. Don't hang about. Bar quiet engage bartender in conversation. Ask for cocktail. Bar pack just order. Women animated in conversation leave them be. Women bored lonely looking smiling at me approach and engage in banter attempt pick up line. Etc. All this is almost in a robotic voice in my psyche. I.e. Not natural at all. Obsessions are amped up from non-autistic people. As are following rituals. Every night when I get home. I have dinner. And watch the Simpsons. No ifs ands or buts. If my routine is disturbed. I get moody, but it's not a catastrophe. Of course if I'm not at home, or something comes up, I've learned to let it go. But if possible, I follow the routine to a T. I work as a chef, and my supervisor and I have a certain code word, traffic, that if I mention it out of the blue, it means I need to cool off for a few. I'm getting overloaded here. I have high functioning autism as well as anxiety so some of this may be the anxiety but I find it really hard maintaining friendships at all. For example I left school 1.5 years ago and haven't spoken to one of them in over a year because I quite honestly didn't know how. I also find communicating really hard. It takes a lot of effort and I would find meeting someone new really hard with me having no idea where to go past hello and me getting a stutter is also quite likely. I don't cope well with changes from a routine. For example I will eat the same meals each day and foods but going off of it is really quite stressful. I am also really bad with emotions and I rarely talk about them at all. And won't unless I am prompted explicitly. And I'm really oblivious on the whole and really can't explain it. A bit like trying to explain what left is to someone with no place to reference. A bit of another side effect is at the moment I have no scoliol life as I don't know how to keep one. The last one I had was at school and I wouldn't describe it as close owning to the fact I never saw them outside of school. Nor get one as I don't know how to meet people. What comes naturally to most people takes a lot of learning for me. And I always felt a step behind if not further. At the moment at least. I would love to be just a normal person and have this sort of stuff come naturally. All in all I would say a bit lonely and frustrating when I notice. I am quite happy most of the time but just the smallest thing can't hit and change that. I am doing what I can to get better but it takes a lot of effort for what is for most people as simple as writing. While I live a pretty normal life I have a lot of issues with sensory sensitivity. Like loud noises, bright lights, certain food tastes, smells and standing in crowds of people. These things make me feel a bit stressed out resulting in various issues like headaches and digestive problems. While we're on the subject, certain non-autistic people have the misconception that those of us on the spectrum would lack empathy. That is simply not true. We often have a hard time to read people, but we certainly do not lack human empathy. That needed to be said. I actually think that we have too much empathy. I oftentimes get visibly upset when I feel I hurt someone. My go-to analogy is to imagine being in a country where nobody speaks English and you don't speak their language. You don't have a phrase book but you do have a translation dictionary. So you are speaking the words but the syntax is way off, not to mention accent and pronunciation. You might think you're making sense and communicating well but really people will be confused by you. For me. It's being different enough to be noticed and alienated from other people, but being similar enough to know it and hate yourself for it. I'm high functioning, but I was always a little bit less developed than others my age and was always ostracized for it. Got bullied out of high school by former friends when I finally told them I was high functioning and haven't ever finished. Now after isolating myself for 7 years I have no idea how to make friends because social interaction is something that does not come naturally or easily to many of us. You can try and try to make friends but there is always the little voice reminding you that you are different and you are always paranoid that others notice. 
so you begin to hate yourself for it which then is noticed by others who then don't want to be around you, further convincing you of your differentness. It is the most lonely feeling in the world to know how you are supposed to act and not be able to do so, as hard as you try. I would not wish it on anyone. It's really, really lonely, to be desperate to go out and be with people but at the same time have no idea how to interact with them, left out of every conversation, completely ignored. The benefits are basically being able to concentrate on anything and really excel at it. Also not falling apart in an emergency, because the emotions of the situation don't really come into play. Imagine you just started a new job, but you didn't get any on the job training. The company has a very different work ethic to what you're used to. The environment is different. The people are unapproachable. Everyone seems to know what they're doing but you, nobody seems to accept that you don't know what you're doing. They just get irritated with you. It's assumed that you can just ask people for help if you're struggling but everyone is scary to approach and makes you feel inadequate. That's what it's like for me anyway. One of the things that bothers me most is that I have a very hard time expressing myself verbally. I am supposed to be high functioning and I'm overall pretty bright. But when it's time to speak, I sound like a dumbass. Whenever I want to talk about something complex, I find myself struggling. It's like somebody else is speaking in my place sometimes. This can be quite frustrating. Imagine that you are an experienced stamp collector. And when somebody asks you about some of the interesting aspects of your hobby, you can't get past. I find stamps pretty. Whilst being fully aware how retarded that sounded, this is obviously an exaggeration. But that's pretty much how I feel sometimes. Also frick making excessive eye contact. It's perfectly fine until it's not. Sometimes a situation I've been through a hundred times before will suddenly be sensory overload. Can't think. Panic and anxiety set in. Thankfully I have a very understanding partner who can help me through it. But sometimes that's too much for me too. Those are the worst days. High functioning. With the depression. Anxiety and mild dyslexia that goes with it. I can get unexpectedly and disproportionately agitated and frustrated when plans get changed or something is cancelled. Even something small like having my mind set on what I'm having for dinner and then being offered something else. I know logistically that it doesn't matter that we're not having pizza like we planned but it can make me extremely agitated and temperamental. Which, of course, makes me more anxious. I have found myself in conflicts with people at work when a joke was taken the wrong way or I straight up misunderstood their intention and had to work hard to remedy things or know when to drop things. I can easily escalate problems because someone else's point of view seems so illogical. Many people I work with know I have these conditions, but not all. I try to be held to the same expectations as my co-workers and if I freak up due to my condition I'll take the penalty. I'm lucky to have an understanding wife and friends both in and out of work. They know if I'm agitated I need time to myself, or may need to stick to a routine even if it seems unimportant or petty. I've had some great managers at work who have put in the time to coach me through a communication issue if I say I'm not sure how to handle it. The sensory perception is annoying. I wear sunglasses everywhere and so many people ask why I'm always wearing them. Tell me it's not that bright. If we're at a pub or club or anything with a lot of chatter I might as well be wearing soundproof headphones for all I can distinguish. On the other hand my obsessive interest in film makes me super knowledgeable for my current profession. It's not uncommon for people to ask how I know so much about movies, comics, TV and whatnot. I seek out and retain a lot of information when I'm into a topic. As my, also autistic, son calls it, we suck it into our brain for later. It's not much fun seeing how the term autistic gets thrown around on Reddit these days. It's become an all-encompassing insult for anyone who appears antisocial, dumb or in disagreement with the larger population. Not much can be done about that though. My brother is autistic. I can't tell you what it's like from his perspective. But it doesn't take long to figure out that a lot of people have zero sympathy for someone that isn't neurotypical. I'm high functioning, and from what I can see I'm really lucky compared to some others. 
I do have the habit of being rather extravagant. I look back at some of the things that little Lord Charco did and want to garrote him, only slightly exaggerating. In all honesty, when I have things that I like or am even slightly interested in, I'm into them in a major way. Normally, we're talking video games. When I was in my Portal 2 phase, I wrote a short story about it in class. That same year, I was also in my Skyward Sword phase. We were asked to choose an artist and research them. I chose Yoshi Aoki Oyama, the main artist behind the art style in that game. This obsession type of thing can be found in other areas, which makes being a teenager way harder than it needs to be. Sentimentality is a good way of describing this. Right now, I'm in a holiday house that my family frequented for a few years. One of the things I did when I was here was that after dinner, I would go down to a corner store not too far away. That became a really special thing about coming here. We went out for dinner, and when we came back, we noticed it was closed. I was genuinely upset. I know this makes me sound like a spoiled little crap, but walking down to that store while the sun was going down, and walking home while being able to hear and see the beach made me so happy. Having the ice cream kind of gave things a through line. Typing this out now, it sounds weird, silly, and really stupid and petty, but this is kind of what it's like. You have these really strong feelings that you know are wrong, but you can't not have anyway. Maybe that's the hormones. Maybe it's both. It's weird though. I know that. It feels like emotional purgatory. Onto the good things. Though, I'm way luckier than others. I don't attack myself or others during emotional breakdowns. I don't tear things down like I've seen can happen. I have impulses to do so. Yes, but during those moments I know I'll regret any damage I cause. Which makes times when dad gives me a hammer and asks me to dislodge a piece of wood all the more sweet. High functioning. So maybe I'm not getting the full experience. Eye contact is tricky. It's not so much that I hate it or it's uncomfortable. I just never think to use it. But also when I look people in the eye it feels oddly. Confrontational? Never quite understood eye contact. If I'm highly stressed, I shut down. I'll seek out a corner and stare at the floor. I've gotten better about speaking up and letting people know. When I was little I had no idea how annoying I was. Every question the teacher asked I was flailing my arms begging to be called. I would get in trouble for playing too rough at recess. Whenever the counselor would talk to me I'd burst into tears. I'm pretty bad at small talk. Even if someone just asks what's up I try to think of something witty instead of not much and an awkward moment will pass. I'm not great at talk in general either, or in sounding confident about what I say, not because I'm not confident in the words but I'm just not confident in saying them aloud. Nowadays I try to study people to get an idea of what I should be doing to fit in properly. I'm definitely an odd mix of logical and emotional. Also, cuddles and hugs are crack to me, which I know that autistic people are extra big on touch. Sometimes I'll stim, flail my arms. If I'm excited or hyping myself up or trying to stay awake but only when I'm alone. You have been visited by the blanket pig up vote for good night's sleep for the next lunar year. Thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.